Hey everyone, it's Kyle from Command Creativity, and today I'm going to show you how to create this triangular gradient logo entirely inside a Keynote for the Mac. So let's get into it. Okay, so first what you want to do is open up Keynote, which is available for free on the Mac App Store, and then click Create New Document. And let's choose a basic theme, and the basic black template should do the trick. So let's double click to create a new project. First, let's go up to the zoom settings and click 50% so we can see the whole canvas that we'll be working with. And let's also change the view to see our different layers that we'll be adding by selecting View, Show Object List. Now, let's delete the default stuff as we're not creating a presentation but instead designing a logo. So select everything and press Delete. Next, let's change our slide dimensions to be 1000 by 1000 pixels, instead of the default 16 by 9 slide size. So go over to Document, Slide Size, and click, and then press Custom Slide Size and enter 1000 by 1000. Then click Enter. Okay, hold up. We just entered 1000 by 1000 pixels. And if you know any basic concept about graphic design, we should never create our logo in a raster-based editing program like Keynote. We should use a vector-based programs. Now, why would we do that? Well, raster-based programs rely on pixel values to assign your design, whereas vector-based logos can scale to any dimension that you want, which maximizes their versatility. So why are we still using Keynote? Well, I love Keynote because it's super easy to use, it's just super fast and has so many use cases. With that being said, let's get back to designing. Now let's get started by creating the basic logo structure. So hop up to the zoom controls again and change it to 75% or something where you can see the whole canvas. And next let's add the first triangle shape. So go over to shape triangle and simply click to add it to the canvas. Then let's scale it up a bit. So go to Format, Arrange Size, and enter something like 885 points by 845 points. After scaling it up, let's rotate it and move it into position by going to Rotate and entering 270 degrees. Now let's center the triangle in our canvas by clicking and dragging it until it snaps into place. Awesome. Now after the triangle is in place, let's create the outline piece. Simply click on the triangle and press Command D to duplicate it. Then let's adjust the color so we can see this duplicate by going to Style, Fill, and then choosing a red color. After that, head back to the Arrange section. Now snap this duplicated triangle to the center of the canvas by clicking and dragging it. Then click on the top rightmost transform icon and hold shift until you get to a width of 590 points. Once that's done, let's move it to 170 points on the X and 205 on the Y. Awesome! Now let's cut the red triangle out of the white triangle by clicking on the white triangle first and then shift clicking on the red triangle. With both of them selected now, head up to the format menu and select shapes and lines and choose subtract shapes. Okay, now with that done, it does look pretty boring. So let's add some gradient colors to make this design actually come to life. Now to make a safe copy of the logo we have already, let's duplicate this artboard in this case, or slide. So head up to the first slide and press Command D to duplicate it. Then let's head to the second slide and add some further shapes. So click on our triangle and duplicate it by pressing Command D and snap it to the center. Let's also change the color to blue. After that, let's add some gradient color to one of the triangle sides. So go to Shape and click on the Pen tool. Let's zoom in to around 125%. Now let's create our custom shape. So basically we want to create a section to add color to. So first add a pen point here and move the pen over here and click and hold while moving to the right until the tool adds a curve. Release and once it adds a curve, click to confirm. Then move your mouse down here and click. Then let's add another curve by completing the same process. Click and hold while moving your mouse, release, find your curve and click to confirm. 
Now, connect your custom shape by clicking on the original point. Now, let's adjust the shape by moving the points to a precise location. Just click and drag the points to refine their location, like this. Once you're set, let's add a fill to white, and then cut this shape out of the triangle by clicking our custom shape, and then shift-clicking the main triangle. Similarly to what we did before, go to Format, Shapes and Lines, and Intersect. Okay, this is going to go by faster as we have the fundamentals figured out. So first, let's duplicate the artboard by pressing Command D on slide 2. And let's scroll up a bit to move our blue shape to the bottom of our layer panel by just clicking and dragging it down. Now, duplicate the white triangle shape and change the duplicated copy to red. And then snap it to the center of the canvas. Head up to Shape Pen Tool and let's create the second side. Now, as we create the curve on the bottom section, we don't need to be precise here as our other shape will cover it up. So create a basic outline by clicking here, here, and here. Now let's add the curve. So click and hold here while moving to the right, release, and click to confirm. Then click on our initial point to close the shape. Now let's fill this custom shape to white and adjust our points like this by clicking and dragging our points. Once you're set, shift click on the white custom shape in the red triangle and click intersect again like we did previously. If you're not happy with your points, just simply undo, tweak your points by double clicking on the edge of the shape bounding box and shift click on the two shapes and intersect again. We'll go fast now, not too fast, but just fast enough. Duplicate the artboard, let's change the zoom to 100%, move our red custom shape down the layer stack, and create a custom shape. This one does not need to be precise, as the other shapes have curves already. So click on the pen tool and make a shape like this by clicking here, 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 and sealing the shape by clicking on the initial control point. Let's change the fill to yellow and intersect the shape with our main triangle. Sweet. Our shape looks nothing like what we want. So here's the key part. Let's reorder the shapes. Let's put the blue shape on top, followed by the red shape, and the white shape beneath those two layers. And now you're done. Hey, look at that. Our logo is actually coming together, but it still looks kind of bad because we don't have gradient colors and shadows and all that stuff applied yet. But here's a quick moment to give you some encouragement. You guys got it. Let me know if you do have any questions. Let's continue on. Now, as a precaution, let's duplicate the artboard or slide and let's color it with the gradients. Let's start with the blue shape. Click on the shape and head over to Format, Style, and Fill. Instead of a single color, let's click Color Fill and add an advanced gradient. Awesome! Okay, so now let's add the colors of the gradient. On the light blue color tab, that's default, let's click it and enter any color you'd like. But if you want to follow along, I'm using this dark purple with the hex color of 360940. Okay, and as for the dark blue color, Let's change it to this color with the hex code of CC2B5E. Nice. So these are just some colors that I picked, but feel free to mess around with your own colors. So to adjust the gradient direction, you can either use the angle wheel selector in the inspector or use the green line with handles seen in the canvas. So let's move the bottom one here and the top one here. Great. Let's do the same thing for the other two shapes. Let's click on the red shape and go to Format, Style, and add an advanced gradient. Our colors from the previous adjustment have been added already, which is a great thing about Keynote, and let's just reverse them by moving this color swatch here and this color swatch over here. Let's move the left gradient handle here and the right gradient handle here. 
For the last shape, let's do it again, and you're probably a pro at this point. So click the white shape and go to Style, Fill, Advanced Gradient, and instead of moving the color swatches, let's move the left gradient handle here, and then the right handle over here. Well, hey, look at that. Our logo is actually coming alive. It has some color, but we're going to add some shadows and then we're going to export it. So we're almost done. Let's get on to the last few steps. Okay, so first, let's duplicate our artboard, which is what we usually always do to make sure we're safe. Then let's add a shadow to this curve here first. Let's duplicate our bottom shape and move it until it snaps. Then let's add a custom shape just over the edge. So hop up to the Shape tab and click on the Pen tool, which is like our favorite tool right now. So let's create a simple shape over the edge by clicking here, 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 and here to close the shape. Then shift click on this custom shape in the bottom shape and click Intersect again. Then we get the small little shape and let's change the color to white. Next, to add a shadow, click on the white custom shape that we just created and go to Format, Style, Shadow, and click Drop Shadow. To get a nice soft shadow, set the blur to 50, the offset to 0 points, and the opacity to 50%. Done. Okay, so now let's do it to the other corners by following the same exact steps. First, click on the top custom shape, duplicate it, and move it until it snaps. Then, let's create another custom simple shape over the edge. Click the pen tool and draw a shape like this. Then, shift click the custom shape with the top triangle side and click intersect again. And change the color to red. Head over to shadow and enable drop shadow. And all the settings should follow from the last time we added drop shadow. Finally, let's add the last bit of shadow to the bottom by doing the same thing again. Click on the bottom triangle border and duplicate it. Create a new pen shape to isolate the corner. Once that's done, shift click on the just made shape in the bottom triangle border and intersect again. Change the color to yellow and add a shadow, which will keep all of the existing settings, which is great. To finalize the shadow, let's tuck these three shadows underneath the corresponding layers. So let's move the white and yellow shapes under the bottom triangle border like this. Okay, one weird thing that we see is a subtle outline from these shapes here. To clear it up, just shift select the yellow and white shapes from the layer list and press the down arrow once. Then select the white shape and press the left arrow once. And then select the yellow shape and press the right arrow once. Well, it doesn't really look like it fixed anything. It looks like we made it worse. But it actually made the drop shadow a little bit better and we won't have those pixels overlapping there. We'll come back and trim the edges up in just a minute. Lastly, select the red shape and move it below the top triangle border like this. Select the layer and press the up arrow once and the right arrow once to hide the weird pixel overlap. Done. Finally, let's add the last shadow to the overall shape and get rid of some weird edges. So let's press Command-A to select everything and press Command-C to copy. Now, oddly enough, open Preview. Then head up to File, New from Clipboard, and then press Command-A, and then Command-C again. Close Preview, and you can press Delete, and then duplicate the current artboard. Then click in the artboard and press Command-A, and hit Delete. Then press Command-V to paste the flattened copy of the logo here. Let's change the background color to see the shadow we'll add to the whole logo. Click on the canvas and head over to Format and Background, and change the color to white. You'll see some weird shadows that we'll fix now. So head over to Artboard 1, or Slide 1, and click on the white triangle and press Command-C. And then go to Artboard 7, or Slide 7 in this case, and press Command-V. You'll see that the original triangle doesn't exactly match the size of our pasted flattened triangle from preview. So to fix this, zoom in to 200%, and let's move to the top left of the triangle. 
Essentially, we're going to create a custom mask to cover any weird pixel overlap and cut the shadows out of where they shouldn't be. So feel free to adjust the size to where the white triangle covers most of the triangle underneath, except the weird pixel overlaps from the shadows. To adjust the bottom, let's go to a zoom level of 125% and adjust the triangle to where it covers all of the triangle minus the weird pixel overlaps. Just shift click and drag on the edge to adjust. If you're following the whole tutorial, here are the values in case you want to mirror my example here. Now the fun part. Shift click on the image and the shape and go to format, image, mask with selection and boom. To add the final shadow, click on the final masked image and go to Format, Style, Shadow, Drop Shadow, and then drop the blur to 25 points and the opacity to 30%. Click on the canvas and press Command A to select everything and then Command C to copy. And now let's open Preview and go to File, New from Clipboard. Now go to File Export and let's rename it to something very interesting and choose where to save it on our computer. And make sure the format is PNG and Alpha is checked. This is very important. And then click Save. And there you go, that's all there is to it. And then you can close out a preview and then make sure to save your Keynote file in case you want to make any further edits. All right, there you go. You just created your own logo inside a Keynote. Now there was a lot packed into this tutorial and if you do have any questions, let me know by dropping a comment or visiting us on our website, commandcreativity.com to download the project file or even live chat with us. Also, I wanna offer this to you guys. If you wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one Google Meet so I can answer some questions related to this tutorial or other creative applications, let me know if that interests you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.